This is KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. I am indeed honored today to have a guest in the studio who I have admired and respected for many years. It is really my good fortune today to be sitting with the one and only Basim Youssef. Ahlan wa sahlan, Basim. Ahlan Beek. I have to say that you have an incredible, totally different radio voice. I mean, you have, you're speaking to me outside and now you're totally, completely different. Yeah, yeah. You sound extremely young and sexy, which is totally opposite of the truth. Well, we, we, so, <laughs> which is why I do radio, Basim, you know. Somebody asked me to do TV, I said no, because the TV, the voice won't work, but radio, I can get away with it. Do, do, uh, can, can, can I imitate this? Like, hello, this is KSF. Stanford. In fact, welcome to Stanford University, Habib. Now, we are so honored and delighted to have you here. How Thank long you. have you been at Stanford? Well, I've been here since the beginning of the semester, and uh, I'm, I'm here for one term, one semester. Um, I was given an incredible chance by the DDRL and the Arab Reform Program to, um, to be a part of, uh, them, of, of the program for, for this uh, quarter, and I'm having a great time. Yeah. I mean, did you ever think you would be sort of a visiting scholar at Stanford? Well, I, I you know, last year I was in Harvard, dude. Oh, so. <laughs> so your step down, is it? Is that no, step no, down or no, step up? Or? No, no, no. Anything in California could not be called a step down. I mean, I mean with all due respect to Harvard, but... California is something yeah. else. And you're yes. no stranger to California, of course, yes. and no stranger to Stanford. You were here last year, I yeah. remember. Mm. And uh, and how has your experience been in terms of interacting with the Stanford community so far? Well, I had um, a few interactions with uh, the international dorms, some of the student entities, and it's amazing. You know, I enjoy speaking to the students all the time because... I learn more, like more than I w- you'd ever imagine. Uh, people think that I, I I go there to tell them things that they don't know. Actually, I go there for the, my, the only selfish reason, <laughs> for me to increase my uh, to broaden broaden my perspective. Yeah. I'm I'm very happy. A wonderful and wonderful, brilliant students. Yeah, I mean, um, I know this is kind of a cheesy question, Basim, but are, are you being recognized on campus? I know my students run to me and say, oh, we saw him eating a croissant at, uh, you know, the cafeteria. Well, uh, well, why, why, <laughs> well, the thing is, if they do, why don't they come and speak up? Because I don't know. I don't really? know if I'm recognized. Okay, so, so first of all, you've heard it right here. You're approachable. Uh, 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 People uh, don't have to be scared I, of I you. don't bite. <laughs> no, please. It's good. It's always good for my ego. So please, if you if you spot me on campus, come and say hi. That is very gracious. A- and uh, and you will uh, get us a free selfie. Hey, we talk in Arabic, Arabic, but in Arabic, we talk in Arabic, we talk in English, we talk in Lewandi. You don't know. In Lewandi, in Lewandi, that's the sound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'd like let's take today, Basim. Allah yati kal afiyah. I know that it's not an easy day. You had a talk in the morning. You're having this uh, discussion with me today here at KZSU, and then you have a, a talk this evening. Um, how much does it take for you to be quote unquote on for these kind of events and do you feel that maybe uh, your, your uh, the repetition of it, it can be a little bit um, exhausting well yeah the uh, the repeti- because basically the questions are the same hmm. you know but, but you have to understand that this is like performance like that someone going on stage doing the same performance every single day it's people that they haven't seen this before or people who haven't heard it before and the, the exchange of knowledge and the exchange of perspective is very enriching yeah so uh, i i don't find it uh, boring or repetitive at all i mean every time i would get something new for myself and i will find an, a different method or way to uh, convey my message and uh, the, the, and, and as i said that like, the people were wonderful i have met with uh, people not just with students but like postgrad and the actually fellowship programs that are offered for much older mm-hmm. uh, um, people and um, it's been extremely enriching yeah. extremely productive to me so I, I really welcome the interaction and one of the things I noticed this year, you're you're sort of standing up and interacting with the audience directly. I remember the talk last year where you were sitting with, uh, uh, what was it, Professor Diamond, I think. Yeah. And and it was sort of, you know, a discussion. But now I hear you've been getting up and getting the, the crowds on their feet and yeah. sort of interacting directly. Is that sort of more comfortable for you when you have a direct contact with the audience? Yes, because... Um 
I have to say that they, you know, the what what's called the uh, f- fireside chats. I'm more comfortable for me. I mean, I don't have to prepare anything. It's a question and answer. But actually, to do a whole, let's say, show, it gets people more engaged. Yeah. And it uh, and it brings the message across much better. And. Uh, it's it's much more fun too. Yeah, is it rehearsed, Basim, or is it sort of you you you, you kind of go with the flow and from the vibe you get from the audience? No, part of it is is rehearsed and prepared. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's people who came out of their way to, uh, to see you, and you have to give them something. Yeah. So, out of respect to their time and their uh, uh, commitment, you have to be committed to that, uh, like appearance and you have to give them something for them to appreciate yeah and talking about things you've offered us uh, your loyal fans let's talk a little bit about the democracy handbook yeah uh, which is kind of a YouTube series and yet it's also has it's kind of associated with a TV channel can you tell me a little bit about the show and how that came about well the fusion uh, network people they were lovely people who believed in me and they wanted to do something in uh, that's related to American politics but with Middle Eastern perspective so they thought that this will be the perfect combination to work with me on this and um, basically what I did was um, speaking about different uh, aspects of American political life all the way from guns um, um, elections free speech um, but from a Middle Eastern perspective. And, and it was you sort of who, who um, are broaching these topics or do they suggest what you... No, no, we, we basically, me and the writers kind of like sat down and I said, what is something that is common between us and, and here? Yeah. And uh, we talked about, you know, we talked ha- about hate as being a lucrative business model, hmm. which hmm. is basically you can right. pretty much relate to it back home. Yeah. Uh, the only difference is that here they, they can they can generate more money because they are because capitalism <laughs> yeah, yeah but I mean the series uh, first of all we, we need to say thank you to Fusion TV for bringing this to us I mean through the YouTube channel but also the special aired on actual TV and for us to be able to hear sort of an Arab American voice or even an Arab voice or an Egyptian voice in the or an media. Arab with a scary uh, American uh, uh, accent uh, yeah American so, Arab <laughs> so yeah we, we've watched some of these videos they're kind of scary I mean I've got uh, titles like how would say how to spot ISIS and, uh, or how to what is it like you were talking to the Muslim community some kids yeah. and you were sort of taking notes and asking them what memberships they did was Qaeda check yes. ISIS check <laughs> you know and then what was it like uh, YMCA check you yeah. know um, and of course this is sort of what defines you um, uh, Basim Yusuf as somebody who's able to look at maybe Islamophobia look at hatred look at some of the uh, tragic things going on right now and yet to try to find a comedic way a satirical way of addressing these issues issues. How difficult is it for you to do that in the current circumstances, considering the upcoming elections, for example? Well, it is not difficult because at the end of the day, we can criticize the American political life as much as we can. But like you have to admit that you have free speech here. You can say whatever you want. I mean, you uh, you will be faced with backlash, but it's not going to be a government coming to shut you down. So we have to be th- I have to be thankful for that. However, my biggest cha- challenge is is that when I speak about um, uh, topics like Islamophobia, uh, I'm not defending a religion. Mm -hmm. I'm not defending, uh, I'm not there for to be an Islamic apologist. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm there to defend the right of the people to believe in whatever they want. Uh, Having said that, we as uh, Muslims, Middle Easterns and Arabs, we have to recognize uh, some of the flaws that uh, governs our um, main, much of our mentalities, we have to uh, to acknowledge the the problem within our uh, the way that religion is used within our communities. So it's kind of like I'm in a no man's land where on one hand I am fighting against uh, racism or speaking against racism against uh, Muslims. But in the same time, I'm recognizing the problem that we have. And though, if you want to say the collective Islamic mind, mm-hmm. we do have a problem. It's very easy to speak about like the racism against Muslims, the Islamophobia and whatever. And this is like, you know, 
this is a no-brainer. But we also need to be honest and, and, and sincere with ourselves. I mean, we, we make fun about American exceptionalism. We have also Islamic exceptionalism. We be, Many people here believe that whatever works for other people doesn't work for us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Or, for example, although that I'm not a big advocate of this, you can make fun of other religions, but not us. You can make fun of other prophets, but not ours. Yeah, yeah the double standard. Uh, the, 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 yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, all right, someone will draw the prophet. Yeah. You don't have to go out and burn flags yeah. or threat. I mean, in one point, I am against the narrative of like what uh, that the Muslim community should do more. I'm I'm not obliged to wake up every morning and denounce ISIS, right. because you know it it goes without saying. And on the other hand, we should kind of chill out a little bit when people <laughs> make fun of us, yeah. because if you want to be included in a community, maybe we should play with the rules with the whole community. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't get worked out when Jesus is being portrayed or made fun of in American media. Yeah. Maybe we should not care too much if they did the same, yeah. and if. By doing so, if you kind of care less or do not care about that, you are disarming them from basically pissing you off. Wow, well, I like that. You You're know, actually sort of subverting what we're yeah, trying so, to do. Yeah, so it, it is in the middle. Yes, I'm against people making or, or kind of getting down on a minority that are mostly Muslims or Arabs or Middle Eastern. And some of the Middle East are not even Muslims or even their Muslims are not um, devout. I mean, when, when racism happens, it kind it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't look at your ID card or ask if you if you pray five times a day if you could be Christian and still be discriminated right. against. And ha it happened. Yeah. But and, and I mean, I mean, as a matter of fact, the, one of the first crime victims after 9/11 was an Egyptian Christian Coptic. A Coptic, yeah. you know. So it, it, it so that's why I fight against this kind of racism. Right. But in the same time, we do have an obligation as Muslims. And Eastern Arabs, that we have to have a, a very honest discussions within our communities of w what is the narrative that we want to project, what, how can we react to criticism or satire. Right. We shouldn't. We should just like jump the gun every time somebody makes fun of it. Yeah, we we say yes. This is racism. This is not acceptable. But you you should really make this in a way that it doesn't alienate the rest of the community because whatever whatever um, the reputation that they have, or like a, we don't we don't chill out. We're, 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 we don't have a sense of humor. We do. <laughs> oh my gosh, do we ever? Yeah. Especially the the Egyptians. I mean, خفت الدم المصري هذه معروفة قوي. But but you're right in terms of using satire and humor as a way to kind of, you know, respond to the um, racism, perhaps. Do you get ever sort of tired of, uh, you know, the fight? Are you optimistic or pessimistic when you're looking at the state of things today? As long as there is free speech, I'm always optimistic. The thing is the people who are, that who we um, accuse them of being Islamophobes, their point of view is that it's not Islamophobia if we cre if, if, because this is an objective criticism of religion but the problem is they they kind of give you a choice sometimes which i don't i don't approve they have these things like oh all right if you're like the only real literal um, application of islam is isis and if you're a moderate muslim you're a hypocrite <laughs> you're cherry picking so which ba which basically give you, they are giving you the choice you either be an atheist and you denounce the religion altogether or you become isis which is like is this what you want to put us in yeah. or they say like or oh, you're not criticizing your religion as much as you should do so first of all they don't know because we do have much of this discussion with in the community, much of it is in Arabic. They don't understand Arabic. Yeah. They they w just want to have a copy paste of it in a Christian reform, Martin Luther kind of way in our in our religion. But it doesn't. But they wanted to do ca from the outside. Yeah. They don't even give us the chance to do it. And the thing is, when they when they kind of like give you that choice of like you either denounce everything or become ISIS, basically they are cutting, they are undermining our tools of actually having this discussion within us because. Yeah. What you're doing right now is even those moderate that you don't like are just gonna. I mean, if they have a choice of like siding with you or siding with a more radical uh, mentality of defending the prophet, they will do that. Yeah, yeah. So it is. It they they just have to let it go and 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 uh, they have to understand that this is an internal struggle. And which is, by the way, the 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 biggest advocate of this struggle are not the religious entities. It is they they are missing a huge part of the equation, which is the military dictatorships in the Arab world. Yeah. Many of these military 
quote unquote secular and they're not secular, mm-hmm. they are the ones who are empowering this kind of religious mentality in order to stabilize their governance. Right. So that's why those people are pretty much misguided when they say, say, for example, if you have a military dictator, it's much better than having an ISIS-like government, which what they don't realize is like one thing leads to the other. Um, Basim, how, how hesitant are you these days to kind of criticize or critique uh, their governing system in Egypt today? If you follow my Facebook page, I'm pretty much vocal. Uh, like, I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, I just a couple of weeks ago, I wrote like one of the most uh, disturbing <laughs> Facebook posts ever when I said that when I basically accused of the military of being paid mercenaries who are who don't care about governance as much as they pay about money and this was the, one of the strongest criticism that I that I actually uh, that came out against the military sta- business establishment so it's just like it's people just like govern the, the, or, or judge me it's like I don't do videos anymore but like you know <laughs> I can do whatever I want. I can do a tweet or Facebook or whatever. The fact that actually my show is off the air is the biggest statement against the regime. You're you're meant to, you're talking about Bernamek yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, the Bernamek is off. They, they, the thing is, they just want to, me to replicate the Bernamek. If I don't do it in the video, it doesn't count. I mean. Yeah. It does. I mean, I, I don't know if how much of this you're aware of, Basim, but you, you are speaking um, our minds. You're speaking our hearts. I mean, Thank when you. I told people I'm interviewing Basim Yusuf today, they all said, tell him shukran for giving us a voice, for giving us and for letting us chill out because you are representing a different side to our culture, to our Arabness, to our Thank whatever you. You, you want to call it. And I think that's really important. I want you to know on behalf of so many people who have talked to me about today is that you are much needed, Basim and that when the times may be coming you're you're feeling a little bit like you are neither here nor there and you're being attacked by both sides you actually have such a large amount of followers who need you and need your voice and we want you to keep going Habibna and don't give up keep the I'm, humor I'm, not giving yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find different like you know different venues I'm trying to find my voice in the American community I mean maybe my next struggle will be trying to find a foothold for me in American media as an Arab uh, voice you know Know, which we're be pretty much lacking. Perhaps right here at KZSU while you're at Stanford, <laughs> you're welcome to come have your own show here. Well, well, thank you. We'd be delighted. Uh, Basim, I, I mean, do you go back to Egypt at all? No, or? I haven't gone in two years. Yeah. And is that partly like your decision or I don't no, want to... You know. No, I mean, like I, I left there because they, they came after me with like... Uh, stupid verdicts and stupid uh, lawsuits and you know why go back and take the risk right but these, these are still you know sort of in effect technically or no I mean but if you follow Egypt they don't need a legal um, hmm. reason to jail you no so again I, I why would I take the risk I mean they took away the show so the question is why go back yeah uh, if the only thing that I have to deal with is a, a huge risk right but they took away the show back them. They did not take the amazing relationship you have with the Egyptian people mm-hmm. because they are still through the internet and through, you know, everybody's following you, even yeah. though you are in what we call in Mahza or whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, your relationship with the Egyptian people is still strong and beautiful and, and, and humorous, right? Depends on, uh, uh, depends on you know, who? <laughs> who you're talking to because it could be someone who can love me to death or hate me to death. Yeah. I, I'm under absolutely no illusion that uh, there's a lot of people who don't like me and it's it's fine you know it's being uh, be, being a public personality uh, you know this is what this is what happens you have people that who agree with you and people who hate your guts yeah but I, I still want to emphasize the millions who do love you and it seems and to the me millions, like, uh, and the millions who don't <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are your plans for the next uh, couple of months while you're at Stanford I know you're here for the fall well I'm having uh, you know more meetings with and more appearances with uh, many um, um, schools uh, many student entities and also on the 20 mark your calendars 29th of November 29th of November and after it, Thanksgiving yeah in what's called Semix Auditorium yeah they are playing Tickling Giants which, which is a documentary that was done about the show and about me like oh really yeah the senior producer of The Daily Show her name is Sarah Taxler directed the movie followed me for four years wow and she's telling the story of the revolution through Bernamic 
and it's gonna it's 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 a very good documentary. You know, I did my research, but I didn't really know about it. It just this, it just uh, went out today. Wow! And uh, already a hundred tickets sold out of seven hundred in three hours. So get your ticket and be there. Don't get the ticket and <laughs> disappear. Right, be, be there or be square. <laughs> yeah. So that's 29th. and also um, my book is coming up in uh, March. Really? What? what tell uh, me about the book. Uh, well, I'm I wrote a new book. Uh, I've been writing it for a while. It's called uh, Revolution for Dummies. Ah. And uh, hopefully I'll come back next um, semester to, uh, you know, do like a book signing event here. Yeah. And so you've written it in English. Yeah. It's it's basically the, targeting the American audience. Yeah. And would would you, a book like that, would a show like the Democracy Handbook, would those sort of translate for people in Egypt, in the Arab M- world? Many, many people, many people watch. And, but also... The struggle is that people are used to see me speaking about Egyptian issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe that will, that's kind of a, a point against these trials. Uh, as I said, now I'm trying to find my way in a totally different society with a totally different language with a totally different audience. And that's a struggle, and you have to work on that. Yeah, well, certainly as Arab Americans, we need your voice here more than ever. <laughs> One uh, just needs to go through the mainstream channels to find a total lack of absence of any shows that are, you know, and we, we need you there. But at the same time, do you feel that doing all this in English may somehow alienate your Arabic-speaking fans who may not understand the jokes or the humor yes. that you're... Uh, yes, this is... This is uh, a collateral damage that I have to deal with. No. You know, you 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 earn new uh, audience and you lose some. Hey, ask Alec in Arabic. I mean, you ask me. 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 You ايه هنعمل ايه بقى؟ الله غالب يعني. اه لا ما دي يعني كده تتكلم عربي دلوقتي وخلاص عشان البرنامج بتاعي هنا ارابولوجي يعني لما ببقى عربولوجي عربولوجي بالعين شكرا باسم يوسف اند اند ذس از ون اوف ذا ثينجز ذات ايف بين ديلوجد باي ايميل سينج وي هير دكتور سلطي وي هير باسم يوسف ات ستانفورد بليز 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 اون بيهاف اوف هيز ايجيبشن فان بيس انترفيو تو اول ذا ايجيبشن بيبل اوت ذير والله بحبكم جدا ووحشني جدا حبيبي ودي مهمه قوي عشان انا كنت هخلي لك الفرصه تتكلم بالعربي كده وتحيي جمهورك المصري والعربي مش بس في امريكا كمان في في البلاد عشان من خلال البودكاست يعني هيستمعوا للمقابله دي ان شاء الله في كل انحاء العالم ان شاء الله سو باسم يوسف اي ونت ثانك يو سو ماتش حبيبنا فور ذس اميزنج اميزنج انترفيو اي دونت نو اف اي واز فيري بروفيشنال بيكوز ام بيمينج هير اند اند اي ام ريلي ريلي ديلايتد تو هاف هاد ذس توك ويز يو بليز دونت بي ا سترينجر ناو ذات يو نو وير كي سي اس يو از اند اف يو نيد اني كايند اوف outlet come we'll give you the mic and we'll put you on the air thank you very much habibi all right ladies and gentlemen we'll be right back my guest has been the one and only basim yusuf right here at kcsu stanford 90.1 fm basim shukran عايز نلعب لك اغنيه كده مصريه عشان ننهي الفاصل ده اي حاجه غير تسلم الايادي عايز ايه انت بتحب اي حاجه اي اي بلدي ولا هيب هوب ولا نلعب لك مصري ولا لا انا خلينا عبد الحليم حافظ كده حاجه كلاسيكي كده اه خلاص طيب نحط لك سواح سواح اه او 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 الدنيا دي شفاوه لسعد عبد الوهاب او واو الدنيا دي شفاوه اتس لايك ون اوف ماي لايك ماي فيفورتس اكشلي واي ذات سونج اي نو انا بحب سعد عبد الوهاب اي ثينك هي واز هي واز انجست انجستلي يعني taken all out yeah, I mean, I think he's one of the most talented and, and I love the music come yeah, and I can see a little relation in what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> keep that so why don't we do both we'll play uh, both Abdul Halim and Abdul Wahab Saad Abdul Wahab uh, Saad Abdul Wahab yes. uh, right here on the air uh, as a dedication from Basim Yusuf to all our listeners and the what the studio now what the gamatna ya Basim ahla wa sahla fik thank you so much <laughs> I'm not 
بينهم وناس بتتحايل على الفراق بعيد عنهم لقاهم ايه وكان فراقهم I'm not